Alright guys, welcome back to another Mcrater video. So today what we're going to basically cover is how to set up ownership. Now this will be probably the first part of many parts. Uh, there will be some other polls in the future on how to create some different types of um, access features for this particular tutorial, but uh, I thought I would cover the fundamental part because it would be too long to cover many of the other different ways you can actually use this system for other things. So rather than try to cramp it all into one video, I think it would be best to kind of separate it into smaller videos and it'll be easier to follow once you guys kind of understand how the ownership uh, thing works for blocks and items. So uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need is a block and I'm just going to quickly create one of those. I'm just going to call it um, lock block or lock block. Yeah, sure. Why not? And uh, then we'll just quickly add, whoop, nope, uh, add a texture that I already have imported into the model. Now all these properties are irrelevant. You can set them however you wish. I'm just going to move on to this property and now depending on how you want to set up your block um, there's a few different things that you can do if you want it to basically not be uh, damaged by explosions and stuff you can basically set this value to 64,000 and what this will do for the hardness and resistance is it will allow you to basically prevent block damage and breaking really efficiently. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do is enable is uh, unbreakable. So this basically will uh, prevent people from basically breaking the block. And um, it's great for advanced systems and stuff like that. Other things that you might want to do is just kind of set the properties. I usually have um, the blocks under iron if it's something more advanced. But uh, if you don't want it to connect to, say, fence posts and stuff like that, you can always use a barrier block as well for the material type and what that will do is it won't connect to anything that's metal, wood, or any stone materials either. So it's a nice little handy feature if you don't want it to connect to anything. Uh, for this one I'm just going to basically just use an iron one. We're going to just put this under redstone so because it's a shorter inventory to find things. Uh, you can put it under any creative tab that you want and for the material sound I'm just going to keep with the theme and have it so it sounds like metal as well you can also set down um, custom breaking sounds and all that other stuff as well if you want to but I'll leave that up to you uh, tool able to destroy um, now because it's technically unbreakable uh, this is irrelevant but I still generally set the um, tool able to destroy just to make sure that it's still um, available if it if someone does find a way to break it so I've basically just set the pickaxe and then set the tool harvest level to break uh, to zero um, another thing that I leave is uh, basically a drop amount just to make sure that it's uh, going to drop the item again all right, so moving on, uh, tick up rate. We don't really need too much to do with the tick update. Uh, this um, doesn't really affect the system too much. Uh, we can set the color to on the map to iron because we're using an iron material. Another thing that you want to actually do is under reaction to being pushed, you want to set this to block. Now what this will do is it will block any pistons from pushing the block similar to how chests are set up or furnaces or anything like that and pretty much any GUI inventory uses the block um, setting. Now some other blocks uh, are able to destroy. These are usually plants and other um, materials that aren't as... Um, strong and then there's push only i can't really remember if there's any examples of that actually being a thing i'm sure there's things in there that are only push only and ignore i think the piston just goes right through the block uh if i remember correctly but we want to make sure that it's on block so the piston can't actually move because that could actually drop the items and stuff inside as well 
Uh, all right, so all that's all set up. So all we need to do is go on to tile entity, enable this. We're going to be using MBT to store something. So we're going to set the inventory to, actually let's leave it at nine. We'll create an inventory for it as well because um, that will make sense when we actually go ahead and do other things. So we'll have uh, just a simple inventory of nine slots and then we'll come back and we'll fix up that uh, for the rest of it. Now, drop items, uh, when destroyed, well, they're not technically getting destroyed, so um, we should technically still enable this, because if it has an inventory, then you, if, say, a player in creative comes along and breaks it, then you want the items to drop and not just despawn, so leave that enabled. Comparator output, though, you can basically enable or disable how you wish. So I'm just going to disable that and then we can move on to energy and fluid storage. We don't need anything here. So just move on to triggers. And what we'll do is we'll set up the on block right clicked and on block placed by in just a second. But uh, we need to go and finish up our procedure. So, or not procedure, our our block so we have the generation settings we can just leave that as it is as it's not going to be uh, generating in the actual vanilla world so just click save mod element and then you can move on to setting up the inventory so let's go and create a simple GUI so we'll go and we'll call it uh, lock block inventory inventory and then what we'll do is we'll create GUI we'll select GUI with slots and then we'll have the inventory down there and then what we want to do is we just want to grab some regular input slots and then what we're going to do is basically um, just add these now you might want to enable um, snap components to grid and this is a little setting down here that you can enable and I'm just going to basically put um, nine slots so the ones right across the center here and then we can give the uh, add some text and stuff like that as well so basically uh, the amount of slots that we have in the actual block GUI or block settings is how many slots that we can add to the actual block inventory. So uh, the slots actually start at zero. So basically well, the ending one for the ninth slot is actually the amount of slots that we have in the block uh, settings minus one. So that's basically how many we need here. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to just basically go and name the GUI. So block or lock block. That's really hard to say. <laughs> okay, we'll just add that and we'll put that right at the top here just so you kind of know what inventory you're in. And then we will go and say what the bottom slots are. So inventory and then we'll add this down to here perfect all right the other thing that we might want to do is in the future uh, we might want to add a extra thing uh, to basically display the password or anything like that so you might want to inter like integrate that into your actual system or something for your GUI but this will do nicely for what we need right now so let's just save that and then we will basically link that up with our tile entity and then we'll set our um, actual inventory for the block so our GUI here uh, we're going to not actually have the open bound GUI on right click we're going to run that through a procedure itself <laughs> so now let's go over to the triggers and what we're going to do is create uh, when block is placed by now this basically tests um, has entity support so if the player places the block this procedure will run rather than the block or the trigger for when block added this only 
uh, runs when the block is added and doesn't take in consideration of the player. So anything with the entity will be able to use the, or the entity, um, basically entity tag, so dependency. So um, when entity walks on it, uh, block when block placed by entity, uh, random tick updates, all these different things here are basically able to um, be used for this particular system for block specifically. So let's create that. And this is the easiest way to actually set up the ownership and when the block is actually added what we want to do is we want to get a mbt variable so we're going to just call this ownership or something and then what we can do is we can basically remove this block right here and what i'm going to do is go to entity data and i'm going to grab get display name of and then the entity, so the entity that we're basically is placing the block down and it's going to be dis saving the display name of the entity to the ownership tag here. We can also just call it owner for short and that will work just as well. All right, so once we have that all set up, all we need to do is we can basically have um, a comparator test if the entity basically is the same as the owner of the block, and then we can basically perform an action based on that. So if we go and create, we right click event, uh, we can set up the inventory actually right now. So what we wanna do is we want to test for something, so we're going to grab a if um, if block from the flow control. There's an if uh, statement right there, and then what we want to do is we want to grab a. Um, I think what we want to do is actually grab a comparator for text. So what we're going to do is go to logic and grab the kind of the greeny blue. Um, block right here with just the equal sign and then what we're going to do is grab our block data or block mbt so we're going to grab the one from block data and then the get mbt tag from and then the tag name so we used owner so we want to test for owner and then what we want to do is we want to test for the display name so basically what this is doing is it's going to test if the display name is the same as the owner uh, tag that we basically stored when we actually placed the block. If this is true, then what we want to do is we want to basically open up the GUI. So what we can do is we can go to player, pro player procedures and then scroll down a little bit until you see open screen four and then event slash target entity pass location x y and z and then gui and then you want to select your gui so basically that's what we we're going to do here now as an addition uh, if you want to basically open up something to basically pre prevent them from uh, actually accessing the screen first so you could open up a, a secondary window for like a password or some combination lock or something like that what you could do is you could actually do an else statement and then you would open up that particular gui so you'd have your second gui under here and then you basically link that to that and then when they actually complete the right combination or whatever or the right variable or something like that then what you would do is you would just pass that location over to the actual inventory that is up here so just keep that in mind we'll cover that in a couple future videos uh, for sure i have at least three expansions to this tutorial system planned out but for now this is all we really need to do for this particular part so after we've done that, um, all we can do is just save that. Now, again, anything with the entity tag, you'll be able to pretty much use this under. So when entity walks on the block, um, when entity blo when block is destroyed by player, um, another one is the uh, client display random tick. So that's another one that you can use it on. 
and there is uh, when player starts to destroy, and the other one is when player or when entity uh, collides in the block. So all these different things can basically be used with the ownership um, procedures and stuff. And I'm sure there's a few different global um, global procedures that you can actually work, use as well uh, for the block as well. You just need to specify the actual block and do a few different things. So after that, uh, just save everything and then we're good to go. Let's hop into, actually before I do anything, um, I'm just going to quickly do something really quick with the right click event. Now, um, I want to basically test for something else. Now this is basically what you want to do for the ownership thing, but say I want to change the ownership, uh, what I'm going to do quickly is test for an item in the main hand of the entity. So we're going to just grab a red operator, test for the item in the main hand, and then I'm going to basically just test for a name tag. So name tag is right here. And then what I'm going to do is make an else statement from this. And then I'm going to just drag that over to here. And then what I'm going to do instead is go to block management. And if they are the owner and they're holding a name tag, then I want to set the owner tag to the item display name of the current item in the main hand. So basically like that. So what this will do is it will allow anyone that is the owner of the block to basically pass ownership over to another player through uh, the name tag, but only if they are already the owner. So basically that will do that. You can set this to any particular item and it will still work. Just make sure that it's set up like this and it will basically allow us to test uh, the system in game, especially right now. So we'll save that and then we'll hop in game and then we'll test um, this particular system out. All right, so let's quickly grab our block. So this is under the creative tab that we basically added. So we added it to the redstone. And as soon as we place this block, it will basically uh, add the ownership to our player. So we'll be able to open up the GUI directly like this. Now if we were to grab a name tag and uh, let's see if I can find it. I think it's under tools and then we'll just basically right click on it. Uh, we won't actually have permission to open up the block itself. Now we also basically just um, prevented in this case anyone from actually opening it. So Another thing that you might want to do is actually test if they are op for the particular world. And if they are, then basically allow them to bypass the per, per, um, protection system so they can actually get into the block and reset ownership and stuff like that. So we can actually do that right now. And I'll demonstrate that. But I wanted to demonstrate that you can actually protect your... Uh, basically change the ownership with that particular system. So if we go into um, our right click event and what we want to do is we want to go to uh, let's see if I can remember where it is. I don't use it that often. Alright so it's under entity data and then it's uh, does uh, event slash target entity have command permission level 2 now, um, basically what the different levels are, I will pull up a page just in a second. Okay, so this is probably the best way to actually show it. So basically, um, no permission level. So command permission level, uh, z basically zero. Uh, allow Commands are allowed in the world. Now this is, again, for command permission. However, um, it's a good example of what the permissions are. So basically um level three is uh slash ban slash deop slash kick slash op all these are basically level permission level three 
and then you have permission level four which basically has the commands for slash stop and slash um, basically to stop the server and stuff like that so which is why I basically recommend always having your um, server only on level three because you don't really want people to actually be able to stop the server so that's why uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set the op permission level to level three and that way um, any operator on the server can basically have access to that now what we can do from there is what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a value like this and then we're going to also click on the equal sign of that and we're going to just have an and statement so we're going to place this in here and then we're going to grab a logic and make sure that it's set to true and then what we're going to do is test for our ownership uh, if the player is or our pardon me what we want to do is not have it and we want to have it or and if it, they are the owner of the block or if they are an operator of the actual server then what we want to do is basically run this uh, actual event now if they're not an operator of the server and they're not a actual owner of the block then what you would want to do is you would want to basically pass them through a additional um, step for accessing the block itself so this would be done through an else statement but we don't have time for that to do that right at the moment so what we're going to do is i'm going to create another poll to expand this particular tutorial uh, there are three different types of things that i actually know how to do at the moment i'm sure i'll discover more i keep discovering new ways to actually use this system so um what we'll do is we'll create a poll for a combination lock using an inventory and from there what we can do is we can basically uh, expand into regular passwords and then there was another one with membership and stuff we can do after that so the first one will be probably a combination lock in the picket tutorial but uh, outside of that uh, that's all there is to it and basically what this will do is it'll just allow us to bypass if they are the op so outside of that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll make sure to provide the ownership um, workspace in a the link in the description below and you'll be able to download the procedure and or procedures and the um actual uh, workspace as well so definitely see that and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out